Hey everyone, before I kick off this Turn Mill Thursday video talking about the polar actual interpol that we could do inside of Fusion 360, because it is polar temperatures as you can see outside where I live right now, I wanna go ahead and give a big shout out to everybody and anybody, all 75 of these awesome subscribers that I've gotten over the last two weeks. I've officially hit my goal for what I wanted to do in the first 14 days. And for any of you that are wanting to or still haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Please hit that like button and by all means leave comments down below to help me to understand what kind of content you guys want i'm basically going off my experiences and all the information that people pass me when they put in tickets through the jit cad cam portal again link down below if you guys want to check that out let's go ahead and jump into this video as you all can see i have my part opened up we're all ready to go i've already created my setup and then i've thrown at this just a basic rough and finish cycle around the outside of the part um, I'm happy to program this part on a Turning Tuesday segment if you want to see just the two axis moves. However, for this demonstration, we're more focused on the actual milling side here. So I'm going to go to the milling tab. I'm going to do a 2D adaptive clearing. And let's go ahead and just grab like a half inch end mill. And then with that, we're going to go ahead and pick that face that we want to machine out. Leaving all of my stuff basically default, all I care about is getting a path on the part, right? So let's go ahead and post this out. So I am gonna post this out, and I'm gonna post this out based on a, let's go with a ST25Y. And we do have live tooling, so we always wanna make sure that we have live tooling checked. And we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. Now in our G code, we're only getting X, Y, Z motions. We're actually very rarely getting C axis motions. So what's happening is, is in our machine, all of our motion is being attributed at just the X, Y axis, nothing on the C. So now how do we do actually an X, C motion versus a, you know, X, Y motion? So let's go back. And this is a really neat trick. So if you guys didn't know this, there's actually some like secret ways to control your actual toolpath is we're going to go in and we're going to hit the little edit button next to our post. And as you guys are going to see, we actually have two variables here. One is polar interpolation and the other is polar coordinates. Now, what I like to do is I'm going to copy and I'm gonna turn these into templates so I can reuse them later if I ever need them. But let's use the use polar coordinates. So I went ahead and copied that. We're gonna close everything out. And now let's create our manual NC and do an action. I'm gonna go ahead and paste in that actual line of code. And with that, we need to put it before the toolpath. And now that we have that before the toolpath, again, we're going to post that out. And we need both segments here so that we tell Fusion to go in and create a different kind of coordinate system. And that different coordinate system, again, is now you're seeing we're doing an XZC motion around our part. So we're no longer actually using the Y axis to create this profile in the case of this part. So again, like I said, is I like to turn this into a template. So let's go ahead and store that as a template. And then I'm not gonna call it a manual NC. I'm actually gonna post that polar coordinates. And let's just go ahead and put this in my cloud and save that. So now let's look at another scenario where you might wanna go the opposite direction, right? So we're gonna go ahead and do a 2D contour. I'm gonna throw a chamfer tool path at this. So let me grab my spot drill. And with that spot drill, again, we're gonna go ahead and just add a 10 foul chamfer to our part. And as you can see, we're now going all the way around our part. Again, we're gonna just post this out for a comparison. Again, using that same exact post processor. And we're now getting X, Z, and C motions, but we're only moving the C as needed, obviously staying in the X, Z, and C. So now if we go in and restart the process, I'm gonna go into my post menu. I'm gonna hit that edit button again. We're actually gonna grab the interpolation option. And we're going to, again, do the same thing all over. Let's go ahead and add a manual NC. This is gonna be an action. I'm gonna paste that in. And then with that, we're gonna go ahead and drag that up and we're gonna drop that so that we can grab both of those tool paths and post them out all over again. And now what you're gonna see in this G code is you're now seeing the occasional C axis motion as needed, but we're forcing a you know Z Y motion around this part. So unless we're getting to a center line, and again, we could control F and type in C, there's only one C axis motion, but we're staying specifically in 
the y the x axis plane and we're not using the c axis to tilt our part like we did before so that wraps up turn mill thursday and i want to give a big shout out before i actually jump out of here for the day and let you guys all get back to what you should be doing besides watching this youtube video is i want to give a big shout out to my buddy jason over at nerdly if you haven't seen his channel he makes tons of content on machine and it is extremely helpful for a lot of users however he's also the one that's critiqued me convinced me to buy a way better microphone not to mention as you guys may notice in this video the awesome floating head so go ahead and go check out his channel i put the link down below as well as the parameters that you need to copy and paste to make those templates that i did and as always you guys have a great rest of your day